An operation that is often performed is that you bring data from one, let's say, Excel spreadsheet into a feature class of municipalities or addresses or whatever. So basically we call this operation joining. So we join two tables, two attribute tables based on common attribute values. And that's what I've been talking about in the following. First of all, um, the process starts by you identifying um, common attributes in the data set you want. You, um, you then right click on the data set you want the data to go into. Typically, the situation is that you have an Excel spreadsheet that you want to join into a feature class of municipalities. So you right click on the feature class with the objects that you want the data to go into and then you go to the properties of it and then choose joins and in there you click the little plus, the little green plus um, and then that will add the attributes to or add, ask you to create your joins. The create join dialog box looks like this over here. You specify where you want to get data from so the data that you are joining into the other one. You specify the attribute in the data you're joining data from. And you specify the matching attribute that you're in the table that you're joining the data into. Okay. So this is where you're getting the data from. That is the attribute that will match in the data you're joining from. And this is the attribute that will match in the data you're joining into. You can ask it to choose not all of the attributes, but only some, and then only those that you select will be joined. Typically because some of them will be redundant because they already are the ones that you are joining with, so you don't want them really. So that's how the dialog box works. Let's try and look at it in QGIS. If we start with uh, our simple example, we will have our Danish municipalities. And we will have this one with um, educational information. This time, my municipalities here is a blank data set. It only contains region information about the municipality code, the name of the municipality, and so on. Uh, and the data we want to join into it comes from down in this educational one here. You can open that view of it and see this is the data we want to join into the other one. The first thing we have to do is to find out which ones is there an attribute that can be used to match them together. And so if I just open both of them, and if I can find out using this tap there. So um, here we have the attributes of my municipalities. And up here we have the attributes of my educational level. And you can see that we have a municipality code here, 01100. That's the official uh, of the Ministry of Internal Affairs uh, coding for it. We have, and his name is Copenhagen. And then we have a Muni code over here where it is code 101, which is how the Danish Statistical Office codes it. And then there's one Muni code 1, which has the same value, but you can see one is left aligned and one, the other is right aligned. And the difference is basically that one is a text. You can see if this here aligns just like the text attribute does. This one aligns just like a numerical one does as an object ID. So this is the number 101. This is the text 101. You could of course also see it if you had gone in and said properties and then fields as behind and you could see that one of these money codes here is a string and the other one is an integer. So here you could also see it. So <clears throat> up here we have this code 
and we can see that that aligns just like the Munichrome one. The reason why I've got this silly name is that Kyogis shortens the name down to eight characters, so it becomes a bit peculiar. But this is what we've got. These two have been matched together. So I want to join them. I found out I want to join Munichrome one with code, and I close these down. Don't have to, but just and I'll just clear that red one and I'll right click on the layer I want data into so that's my map here, my spatial data I say properties I go down to joins I press the little green plus I select data from education I say that my code should match up with my Mooney code there, yeah, Mooney code 1 and I only want to include my total number of people in education, primary education, and bachelor programs. Say OK. And OK. And what has happened now is that if I now open the attribute table here, we will see that right down the end of it, up here, we have people in primary education, people in in bachelor education and people totally in education. So our data has now been joined into this one and um, we can do all those standard things such as we could make a quick map, say properties and say I want to know how large percentage of the people in the educational program are enrolled in a bachelor program. So style and I'll do a gradiated and I'll use my sigma to say my bachelor divided by population oops not that population my education in total so how many I enrolled in education in total like that and I want to use, oh, I just classify it first. Um, classify. And I probably want to use my quartiles. And that will give me 20% quartiles. I'll give it 10. Um, yeah, let's look at that. So, surprise, surprise. We have the highest percentage of people enrolled at bachelor programs in the university towns. So Copenhagen, Oskil, Odense, Aarhus, Aalborg um, as the primary one. So that's where we have the highest percent of people in the educational system working at a bachelor level. So that was the basics of joining. There is a problem. And that is that many, many real database programs can join on more than one attribute, but most spatial enabled software such as QGIS or ArcMap can only join on one. So if we need more than one to join, and um, we often do that, we will have to create a new attribute which is the concatenation of those attributes we use for the joining. We use this, the easiest way of doing it, there are different ways, but the easiest way of doing it is to use the text concatenation function and then concatenate each attribute separated by some unique character. I typically use an underscore. Um, and let's say in this case here, uh, I have, I'll do a concatenation of the municipality code, the road code, the house number, the storage, and the door. That's basically because the unique address in Denmark consists of these four, five elements here. So we have the municipality code. Road codes are only unique inside a municipality, so we need to have the municipality code on it and if we want to know which 
which house now, but it's on the road. We also need to uh, concatenate that. And if you also want to know what storage and what store, we also need those. Um, <clears throat> to show you how all of this works, I will look at um, making a map of where different types of shops are located or firms are located in the municipalities of Copenhagen and Frederiksberg. These codes, um, the firms are only to reference at this address, um, access address at the ground floor level. So we'll use the same data set as we were using before on QGIS. So I have my access addresses and then I have these it, peculiar enough it has an icon like it was data but it is a table so let's load that in and what we can see we got here is that I've got a attribute table here and it says that this was place watches and gold and silver and these pl different types of shops we can go down here um, this is the NASA code of it if you um, I've worked with this type of data before and we can see we have all the green grocers here these are the green grocers and they have a road code a municipality code and a house number if we look at the attributes of our addresses they have a municipality code a road code and a house number so we've got the same three attributes we can use so road code, road code, municipality code, municipality code, and house number, house number. But we can only join on one, so we need to create a unique combination. So we'll use our field calculator. But how many are there? Now nah, we do not want to do it in here, we'll do it down in the fields properties because otherwise we'll have to wait a long time so we go and say properties and fields and we will create a new field and it will be a unique address and that will be made using the concatenation the concatenation as I had on my slide is in a string operator text operator so here we have the concatenation tool so it's a function and it is over here in the help text it says that you put the text you want and a comma in between so in my case I want to have the municipality code a comma a single hyphen Oh. comma uh, my road code comma dot 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 comma house number finished oh and I've got a dot there and not a comma so Then get rid of the dot. So, and now you can see down here, it has this is an example. So, municipality for expert, road code four, house number one. I don't quite remember if I can read. Ah, let's say okay. And okay, so that was my address data set here and you can see it already go it automatically goes into edit mode when I create things so I just have to save it and then I do it down in my addresses so I go properties and fields and this editing tool and unique addresses and it has to be a text and I have to use my string and my concatenation and it's going to be the concatenation of 
the municipality code the <coughs> road code and the house number and you see the example and OK <coughs> and OK and we can stop editing, save and now go into my firms and do exactly the same properties go down use this one you string concatenate fields my municipality code comma comma oops comma uh, road code, comma, comma, house number. So I've got the same now, and I can get an example looks like the same, but it's not the same one, but never mind. And I'll call that unique. address and it's going to be a text so. so that was the one in my my firms and the one I got down and stop editing Let's see so now we have a single attribute, which is the concatenation of those three attributes. So if I now want to make a map of where the different types of firms are located, I can go in and say properties and go to joins. And because I only got one, I can go in and say here. And this is Miss Long unique one. And it's going to match up my unique one. And I only want to have uh, I don't want all of these firm, maybe I want the name of the firm uh, and which type they are and I don't need this unique one either. And it's the opposite way around. Da -da -de -da. I have to tick the ones I want and not the ones I don't want. So And OK. So now I should be able to go in here, say properties and style to make a map of it, use categories and ask them for my text of my firm type, classify. And if you wanted to know where all the green grocers are, we can look for green grocers uh, there they were and change their symbol to be I don't know healthy star I like that so all the other ones are round but these ones are stars and you see we couldn't really see it so much because we have in this one in our properties here it would be a good idea to get rid of those that are not firms so now we've got a better view of where different types of firms are located in Copenhagen and if I zoom in we can then see and here we have a cluster of green grocers and doing the joins, there's one thing you have to be a bit aware of, um, and that is what we call cardinality. So we have got two tables, an A and a B, and um, we have the attributes A, B, C, D, 
E one two three four five, and then we have this one here. One two one three three four five. And we're going to join them. So, on based on our attribute, so we're going to join our attribute uh, A and B based on attribute three. So we're going to join attribute two with attribute three. But what happens is that well, first one the one that matches with the one and that gives us the eleven here. The next one has the two in it. Uh uh doesn't find the two over here. So that will return a null and no data. The next one down here has a three in it. Oops, there are two threes over here. So it doesn't really know what to do. So it will typically just take the first it meets, but that not, might not be the one you want because there is um, no ordering in a, um, a set. So you can't really control which one you get if you have this type of ambiguity in your join. So be aware of that. This is basically what we call the cardinality. It, we only want to join one to ones. You can't really join a one too many. And that will then give us this problem of what was be the result of in this question mark. So this was the last video in this series about working with attributes where we talked about joining tables based on attribute values. Hope you liked it. Bye.